This is section 7.1 for, uh, for Math 99, and we are going to do reducing rational expressions in this piece. And uh, rational expressions, the definition is a little more involved than this, but let's just think of it as a fraction, just something over something else. There's, there's my fraction, uh, something over something else, so like 5 over 3, or maybe like x squared plus 17 over x to the fifth. Those are all rational expressions. Just think of it as a fraction. And so that being said, let's think with, uh, just think of like the fraction 15 20 -ths. So if we were asked to, uh, to reduce that, I think what most people would do is they would think, um, I could divide top and bottom by something. So for example, five goes into both of these. So I could, I could divide both the top and the bottom by five. And if I do that, I end up with um, three fourths. That's a good way to think about reducing fractions for um, for when it's just number. I want, I want to push that definition a little bit. I want you to think about what if you could factor these first. In other words, break them down into things that multiply to those values. So, for example, with 15, it, it's 3 times 5. And with 20, it's, it's 4 times 5. And I'm doing this because multiplication and division are really, they're, they're inverse operations. They're almost the same operation. Um, they have the same level of difficulty. They have the same um, weight when you do order of operations. So since they do and undo each other, that means I can, I can do them in whatever order I want. I get the same answer. So I, if I do this, notice I can go 5 divided by 5 is 1, and I still get that 3 fourths. So if we start thinking about reducing in this way it's going to help us deal with uh, with more cases than just number cases. So for example, if I had um, a plus 4 over um, a squared minus 16, let's say. I'm going to clean up that 4 a little bit. It was bugging me. It's not much better. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to think about this the same the same way as I thought about this. I'm, what multiplies to this? And a plus 4, I, I can't factor that at all. But this a squared minus 16, I can factor that. That, that factors to a plus 4 times a minus 4. And just like I could go 5 divided by 5 is 1, I can go a plus 4 divided by a plus 4 is 1. So these are 1. So in the numerator, I have a 1. In the denominator, I have 1 times that a minus 4, which is just a minus 4. That's kind of nice. Um, that's telling me that this and this are they're, they're equivalent. They're, they're the same as each other. So if I pl like plugged a 10 in to this top thing, I'd have 14 over 100 minus 16. It'd be the same as whatever 1 over 10 minus 4 is. One There's one thing I need to keep track of, though. Um, I lost some information when I canceled out this a plus 4. Notice um, here I'm dividing by an a plus 4, and here I'm not. Um, and I can't divide by zero. So I have to keep track of this information that I lost. Um, a cannot equal negative 4 and have these still be equivalent to each other. Because if I plug it into here, that would be divided by zero. I can plug it into here and get negative 1 8 but I can't plug it into the original. So I'm going to kind of keep track of the stuff that I that I that I canceled out, that I, the information that I lost. Let's do another one. And uh, let's so let's do this one. 4x minus 8 over x minus 2. So I want to do that same thinking as before. Uh, factor both the numerator and the denominator. And I notice this denominator x minus 2, I can't factor it. But in this numerator, uh, these are both divisible by 2. I could take a 2 out of both of these. Oh, even a 4. Sorry, I could take a 4 out of both of these. If I take a 4 out, I'm left with x minus 2. And what's great about that is x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is 1. So I have 4 over 1, which is 4. So what this is telling me is this original statement here is 4. If I plug in a at 100 for this, it will evaluate to 4. There's only one thing that it wouldn't work for, and that's this. I can't divide by 0. So I'm going to keep track. I'm going to just say that uh, 
The answer is four, but not when x is two, because that would force me to divide by two. Awesome. Let me do one more example like this. And I have more examples than this after this, um, but I'll clean up the page after that. So x squared minus 10x plus 25. And that's going to be over x minus 5. And what I want to do is reduce that. I want to, I want to simplify that. So I look at the denominator, it's x minus 5. If I look at the numerator, I should know how to factor things by now. If you're, if factoring um, is a little bit of a challenge if you're not sure how to do that. Go back, look through the module, um, look, for the, look for the help on factoring. Um, maybe do some practice on Khan Academy. Factoring is something you should be comfortable with at this point. Uh, but what I'm looking for is things that multiply to 25, um, add to negative 10, and that's going to be negative 5 and negative 5. Multiply to a positive 25, add to that. So x minus 5 times x minus 5. And whoa, something cancels out. <laughs> Gives me a 1. So this is equivalent to that, but I lost some information, except when x is equal to 5, because I can't divide by 0. So there's my answer for that. All right, we're going to do a couple more examples on the next, on the next screen. So another example is this. x squared minus 8x plus 15. That's going to be over um, x squared minus x minus 6. So I'm going to factor this. Uh, factor both the numerator and the denominator. See what cancels. So things that multiply to 15 and add to negative 8 would be uh, negative 5, negative 3. Yeah. So that factors to x minus 5 times x minus 3. Things that factor to uh, things that multiply to negative 6 but add to negative 1 are negative 3 and positive 2. So this factors to x minus 3 times x plus 2. And x minus 3 divided by itself is 1. So that's going to leave me with an x minus 5 over x plus 2. So this is equivalent to that. With one exception, I lost a little bit of information. If I try to plug in a, a 3 into here, I'm going to get in trouble because I'm going to divide them by 0. So I'm going to say that. Because I can plug 3 into this and get an answer, but it's not the same as this, and I want these to be identical. So again, do some factoring. Uh, divide out what you can. Do a couple more examples like this. It's going to be uh, 3a squared minus 8a plus 4, and that is going to be over 9a cubed minus 4a. And I'm going to factor uh, both the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator completely, and then see, uh, see what I can cancel out. So if I look at the denominator, I, I notice Take an a out of both of those, giving me a 9a squared minus 4. I can actually even go a little further than that. Um, this is difference of squares again. Uh, 3a squared, take 3a squared, and 2 squared. So this is uh, 3a plus 2 times 3a minus 2. And there that denominator is now fully factored. Factoring this, this numerator, um, there's lots of ways to factor, you know, especially when that leading coefficient is under 1. So I'm just going to try and make an 8 here. Uh, keep those both positive. That makes a negative 6. That makes a negative 2. Yeah, that works. That adds to negative 8. So this factors to uh, 3a minus 2 times a minus 2. So 3a minus 2 times a plus that's times a minus 2. Yeah, great. And so then I notice that the 3a plus 2 divides out, leaving me an a minus 2 over a times 3a plus 2. Now you don't have to mul don't multiply that denominator back out. Leave it in factored form. And again, notice I lost. I'm saying that this is equivalent to that. They'll always give me the same answer for any a value, but I lost that information when that did, when I that I can't out. I can't have that equal to zero. When that's equal to zero, I'm dividing by zero. So if you don't see it, 
And I'll add 2 to both sides. Divide by 3. That would be the value that would make me divide by 0. So I'm going to say A cannot be that. And there's my answer for that one. So I want to do another example. Uh, I'm going to do two more examples total. And they both are going to show you some, some techniques, some factoring techniques. Um, x to the fourth minus 16. So I want to factor that completely. And it looks like the numerator is just x plus 2. So I can't factor that at all. But this denominator, um, x to the fourth minus 16, one thing that I see there is uh, this is x squared squared minus 4 squared. So it's a difference of squares. I, um, I can factor this to x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4. doesn't really help me with the x plus 2 yet, so I'll keep going from there. So I have x plus 2 over um, x squared plus 4. That is prime. But this x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares again. You know, 4 is 2 squared. So I'm going to write this as x plus 2 times x minus 2. And that divides out. That leaves me a 1 over x squared plus 4 over x minus 2. Lost that information where x can't be negative 2, so I'm going to keep track of it. X can't be negative. Great. So sometimes there'll be a difference of squares nested inside another difference of squares. And that's this, that you have an x to the fourth in two terms is a really good uh, sign that, that, that that's going to happen. This is a factoring by grouping example. So the problem is xy plus 7x plus 4y plus 28. And the fact that there's these four terms up here uh, makes it look like factoring by grouping. It uh, actually makes it happen. The bottom is xy plus uh, 3x plus 4y plus 12. So I'm going to do something right now that is that is wrong. Um, one thing that I'll see people do is they'll go, oh, I can just cross out the x plus y's. And that doesn't work um, because this is actually a addition um, that's combining these, not, not multiplication. You need to have them multiplied and divided. Like I talked at, at the start of the video about multiplication and division are, are equal uh, weight as operations. So you would need them to be, um, you need to have it factored before you can cancel stuff out. So I have this four term uh, monstrosity and I'm gonna factor it by factoring by grouping. And so what I'm gonna do first is group it. Um, group the first two terms group the second two terms. And I notice in the first two terms, there's an x in here that I can I can take out. So I factor out an x. And then when I do that, that x is gone. I'm left with uh, y plus 7. And that works because x is getting multiplied by both those things. And in the back, uh, in these last two terms, these are both divisible by 4. So I'm going to divide out a 4 from both of those. And notice if I do that, um, I'm left with another y plus 7. Now that's not only convenient, that's like that's key to this working. Uh, notice I'm, I have a y plus 7 and a y plus 7. What I can do is, just like since these both had an x, I could factor out an x. Since these both have a y plus 7, I can factor out a y plus 7. So that leaves me uh, y plus 7 times x plus 4. Notice that works because the x would be multiplied by the y plus 7, like it is here. And the 4 would be multiplied by it, like it is here. I'm going to do the same process in the denominator. Group the first two, group the second two. Um, these both have a x, so I'm going to take out an x, leaving me a y plus 3. Uh, these both have a 4, so I can take a 4 out of both of these leaving me a y plus 3 again. You know, and this is this is just technique. Uh, since those are the same, I'm, I can factor them out. So I'm going to factor out a y plus 3, leaving me an x plus 4. 
conveniently because x plus 4 divided by x plus 4 is 1. So I have a uh, y plus 7 over y plus 3. And I lost a little information. I know x can't be negative 4 because if it was, I would have been dividing by 0. So this is telling me that this is equivalent to that. In other words, if you gave me some xy values, as long as x isn't negative 4, if I plug them into this, they're the same answer as if I plug them into that. All right, if you have any questions, email me. Take a look at the textbook chapters. Uh, give a try to the, um, to the homework as well.